text familiar to you? Uh, you know, I'll read it to you, and you'll probably just you'll probably say, "I already know what you're gonna preach about." And I'll read this text, very familiar text, Isaiah chapter forty, verse thirty-one. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength; they shall mount up with wings as eagles; they shall run and not get weary; they shall walk. I want to talk for a few moments today with the time that is ours from this thought. Triumph over tension. Hashtag overcoming stress. <sighs> Look at somebody, tell them I'm going to get over it. I'm going to get past it. I'm not going to let it, not going to let it kill me. I'm not going to let it destroy me. I'm going to get past this. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Blessed Holy Ghost, we pray. Um, every one of us, every one of us is going to experience some stressed out days. Um, we're going to have some difficult days. Matter of fact, we're going to have some bad days. Days when disappointment and disaster create tension and it creates tightness. It creates frustration and anxiety. Look at the person next to you. Just look at their face. Stress. Days when everything that can go wrong does go wrong and we feel washed up and wiped out by a tidal wave of stress. Come on, look at somebody else. Look at their face. Stressed. Stress seems to be, stress does, my beloved, stress seems to be the in disease for this generation. One writer declared, we are stressed up with no place to go. Stressed out. Look at somebody else's face. What does it look like to you? Last year, Americans consumed 5 million pounds of aspirin. 34, if it, y'all hear what I just said? 5 million pounds of aspirin. 34 billion tablets doesn't take, doesn't take into effect all the aspirin-type products, sleeping pills, pain pills, or tranquilizers. The American Medical Association reports over two-thirds of the office visits made to family physicians are stress-related visits. We are, we are, we are, we are, we might as well admit it. We are a stressed out society and no longer is stress confined to the workplace. Some people are stressed in their house, stressed in the community, stressed even in the church. According to the United States News and World Report, up to 35% of American, America's children suffer from stress-related health problems in their preteen years, ranging from pulling out their hair to migraine headaches. Stress. Look at somebody say stress. Stress. Stress affects all of us. It does. Don't, don't you sit here and act like it don't. It, it affects everybody everybody it does can i ask you this question how can you and i overcome stress before stress messes around and overcomes us well in the 40th chapter of isaiah the prophet shares with us how to rise how to mount up above stress isaiah's generation faced some stress-filled days isaiah had broken the prophetic news that babylonian captivity was imminent and guess what irreversible God's people would be carried away from their homeland and they would live in exile. They would be slaves in a foreign land serving a foreign master. The storm was coming. The wind was about to blow. The rain was about to fall. And everything in their lives that was not nailed down to the ground was getting ready to come loose. The promise of being a blessing to the nations was about to be severely tested. Can I tell you this? You are getting ready to be tested. If you haven't been tested yet, get ready. It's on its way. Look at somebody say, get ready, get ready. It is in such times of testing that we wonder where is God? 
Have you ever had to ask that question, where is God? Why is God silent? Or why doesn't God do something about what I'm going through in my life? But in the 40th chapter of this prophetic work, Isaiah seeks to help God's covenant people trace the rainbow through the rain. He encourages them to put their confidence in God because God is the one who will sustain them. Can I tell you today that no matter what you're going through, God will sustain you. Look at somebody say, won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? He'll sustain God. God is the one who will protect them, preserve them, provide for them, and prove himself to be faithful to the promises he has made to them. We will mount up above stress when our confidence rests in God. Oh, a God who has all power, God can do anything, a God that can fix any situation, a God who can put anything back together again, a God who can bless your family, a God who can make things work on your job, a God who can make it right. Every problem, did I tell you this? Every problem is an opportunity to prove God's power. Oh, I just said something. Look at your neighbor, tell him you just missed your chance to shout. Can I say it one more time to you? Every problem is an opportunity to prove God's power. Let me say it again because you didn't get excited enough. Every problem you got in your life is an opportunity for God to show up and to prove his power. Every problem you got, can I tell you right now, if you got a problem right now, God fitting to show up and turn your situation upside down. Look at somebody say, because he's my God. Make it personal. Look at somebody say, God is my God. And my God shall supply all of my need according to his riches and glory. Whatever I need, God's got it. <laughs> my God. Every problem is an opportunity to prove God's power. Every day we encounter countless golden opportunities brilliantly disguised as insurmountable problems. Well, what is stress? I'm so glad you asked the question. Look at the person next to you. That's stress. What is stress? If we're going to overcome stress, we must clearly understand what it is that we are trying to have success over. Some people have stress and they don't even know what's stressing them out. Stress is the gap, the gulf between the everyday demands placed upon us and our ability to meet those demands. When your have to do exceeds your can do, stress happens in your life. It is not a sign to be, or not a sin rather, to be stressed out. None of us can avoid stress, but we can avoid being overcome by stress. Let me say that one more time. Everybody gets stress in their life, but can I tell you something? Stress doesn't have to overcome your life. Stress doesn't have the power. You've got the power. Uh, uh, okay, let me say it one more time. You don't have to worry about stress because you've got the power. God has given you the power, the ability, the aptitude, the capability to overcome anything that you're going through in your life. High five somebody, tell them, I know that's right. I know that's right. Oh, my God. Uh, the question is, how can I overcome this stuff? Stuff is driving me crazy. People driving me crazy. Situations are driving me crazy, but I'm not going to allow it to consume me. Hell, how can I, how can I, how can I, how can I get over this stuff? When stress hits, what shall I do? First of all, you've got to elevate your eyesight before you sacrifice your sanity. Whew. Can I say that one more time? Uh, can I say it one more time for the people sitting under the balcony? Can I tell you? Let me say it one more time. You've got to elevate your eyesight before you sacrifice your sanity. The first thing most of us do when stress hits is we panic. We pull out our hair. We tie our stomach up into knots. We frantically start looking for a way out of the storm we're in. We desperately examine our resources seeking a solution uh, to the seemingly insolvable situation. But the first thing you must do is elevate your eyesight. 
try to view your problem from an eternal frame of reference. The text says the prophet urged the Jewish people to take their eyes off of their circumstances. I hear you in the text, but I'm telling somebody in here now, you've got to take your eyes off of your circumstances and you've got to look to God who rules and reigns over every circumstance. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth does not become weary or tired. His understanding whew, is mysterious. God says the first thing you got to do when stress comes up in your life, you got to pause and you've got to remember who God is. Oh my God. Can I say that one more time? I got about 30 amens off of that. I need about 50 more. Look at somebody say amen, amen. Pause. You've got to pause to remember who God is. Do you know who God is? Can I ask the question? And you don't get mad at me because if you know who God is, you ought to be able to answer it. Do you know who God is? <laughs> do you know who God is? Do you know what God can do? Do you know what God can turn around? What he can fix? Don't you know who he is? <laughs> Look at somebody say, I know who God is. Come on, tap a few people around and say, I know who God is. I know. I know. I know I'm going through right now, but I know who God is. God is everlasting. We often see our situation from a temporal frame of reference, but God sees our situation from an eternal frame of reference. God is everlasting. Remember those words that begin in John's gospel. In the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God. John 1 and 1. John was not referring to a start in time but a state in time. He was not referring to a temporal start but an eternal start. John does not say from the beginning. He says in the beginning. That implies a pre-existent state of existence. In other words, before there was a creation, there was a creator. Before there was sun to shine, a moon to glow stars a sparkle there was the glorious all-consuming light of God's great love we cannot understand God on a tangible timeline because God had no beginning and will have no end so any point of reference is irrelevant considering God God does not dwell in time time dwells inside of God God is everlasting <sighs> look at somebody say he's everlasting He's everlasting. And listen, listen. Can I tell you something else? God is infinite. He's infinite. The creator of the ends of the earth. Isaiah says, if you go, if you, if you go from one end of the universe to the other end of the universe, guess who's gonna be there? Look at somebody say, God. <laughs> Imagine taking, taking a trip across the galaxy at the speed of light, 186,000 miles per hour or 669 miles per hour. In 10 seconds, we would pass the moon that is only 230,000 miles away. In 10 minutes, we would have passed the sun that is only 93 miles away. One year, five years, 10 years, 100 years, 1,000 years. Were you and I uh, to tap into the mystical fountain of youth and manage to live 50,000 years traveling at 669 miles per hour we would finally make it halfway across the universe and God would already be there waiting on us he is infinite an atheist once marked a believer by asking where is your God the believer calmly replied, first answer, my question, where is he not? You and I cannot go anywhere that God is not already there. That is why it is ridiculously laughable to try to run from God because every time you try to run from God, you run smack right into God. We call this the omnipresence of God. It is but another way of saying God is infinite. God is everywhere at the same time. You can't get away from God. Oh, oh, oh. But God is also inexhaustible. God does not become weary or tired. Uh, God never runs out of energy. We grow weary and we get tired. Uh, even the energizer bunny cannot keep up with God because God just keeps going and 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 going. 
going and 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 going that 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 God is mysterious God's understanding is mysterious. God is, he is incomprehensible. You could spend all of your life in libraries researching the creator of the universe. You could commit uh, to memory the works of the world's greatest philosophers and theologians, but you still would, uh, yep, would be, would be unable to comprehend who God is. Uh, quite frankly, this brother, this brother's, uh, or rather bothers me rather, some people, because they, they want a God they can control and they can put in a box. But I came by to tell some people, you cannot control who God is. <sighs> Consider for a moment your dilemma from another perspective. Would you entrust your eternal destiny to someone who was no bigger than your limited finite comprehension? If God were no bigger than my ability to comprehend who God is, we would all be in trouble. I cannot comprehend all that God is, nor do I understand all that God does. And I confess that frustrates me. But, uh, but uh, can I tell you, that's what makes God who God is. <laughs> when you can't see where God is going, God has already got something worked out for you. Uh, when your problems run in packs, when circumstances, situations, pain, panic, and heartache gang up on you and stress starts rolling like an avalanche of snow down the mountain of your soul, you need to elevate your eyesight before you sacrifice your sanity. We need to understand there is one who is greater than our problems. Tell somebody, that's God, baby, that's God. One who sees our problems from an eternal frame of reference and possesses the resources to help us overcome our problems. God is God. And when we turn to God, God promises strength for the storms, energy for the task. So don't focus on how small you are. You got to look at how big God is. <sighs> Ain't nothing that will ever come your way that, that you and God can't handle together. Ooh, I just said something. <sighs> Nothing that will ever come your way that you and God cannot handle. Uh, I didn't get enough shouts for that. Let me say that one more time. Nothing can come your way that you and God can't handle together. I came by here to tell somebody God is already working on it before it got started. He worked on it before you were even born because the Bible says he knew you before you were in your mama's womb. He started working on it. All you got to do is wait to catch up to where God is. Look at somebody say, wait on God, wait on God. Woo. Oh, man, I got to move fast. Uh, secondly, you got to transform your worry to waiting. Look at somebody say, wait. Uh, they, 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 they wait upon the Lord. They, they wait upon the Lord. It's in the Bible. It's in the text. Yeah, they wait upon the Lord. The psalmist wrote in Psalm 27 to 14, wait on the Lord, be of good courage. Okay, you missed what I just said. I said, wait on the Lord, you got to be of good courage. And he will strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, I got some Bible readers in here. Wait, I say on the Lord, I cannot tell you how often I've missed out on the powerful promises of this passage because I did not fully comprehend the concept of waiting on God. Oh, you got to learn how to wait. You got to wait. Waiting on God means longing for God. Uh huh. We need to have a deep burning desire for God. The psalmist declared in Psalm 42 and 1, as the deer panteth for the water. So my soul longeth after thee, O God. We tend to view this biblical image as peaceful and serene. Most paintings show a deer at dust silently sipping from the cool stream. Now this is a beautiful image, but there's a problem with the image. The image ain't true. When David wrote as the deer panted for the water, David was being persistently pursued by Absalom, who was trying to take his life. 
He was running for his life. He was exhausted. He was weary and he was gasping for air like the deer exhausted from fleeing the pursuit of the hunter desperately needing refreshment from the spring. David desperately needed a place of refuge and refreshment from his pursuer. He needed God. I'm talking to somebody in here right now. He needed God so he actively pursued God like the deer actively was looking for water. If you want God to show up you got to look for God <sighs> come on look at somebody say you got to look for God waiting on God, waiting on God write this down, waiting on God waiting on God means looking to God I'm waiting on him but I'm looking to him okay let me say it one more time I'm waiting on God but I'm looking to God I'm not waiting on God looking at my problem and getting so consumed in my problem. I'm looking at God. I'm looking beyond my problem. I'm looking to the one who's a problem solver. I'm looking to the one who can fix it for me. I'm looking to the one who can pick me up and turn me around and place my feet on a solid foundation. <sighs> oh, well... Well, well, don't just change. Look at somebody, tell them exchange. Ooh, write it down. Write it down. Uh -uh, write it down. Don't, don't, just, don't just change. Uh, you got to exchange. <laughs> they that wait upon the Lord, oh my God, shall renew their strength. Uh, 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 underline the word renew renew uh, the Hebrew word for renew is chalith and it literally means to exchange oh I just said something uh, look at somebody say exchange uh -huh. The Christian life is not just a changed life, but an exchanged life. Can I tell you this? You ain't the same person you used to be. Okay, that didn't tickle your fancy. You ain't the same con artist you were five years ago. You ain't the same sticky finger person you are now or then as you are today. You're, I'm just trying to say you're different today. You're not the same person. Look at somebody say, I ain't the same person. I'm not. I had to exchange. I had to give up something. I had to give up my old nature. I had to give up what I used to be. I had to exchange it and I had to put on something new. I had to put on the power of God and the spirit of God working in me to change my situation. Look at somebody say exchange. <laughs> Look at somebody say you got to exchange your funky attitude. You've got to exchange your mean spiritness. You've got to change what you are so that God can give you everything you need. Oh my God. Look at somebody say preach pastor. I'm doing the best I can. Let me keep on going. Uh, Paul understood. Paul understood the power of this principle. He writes in 2 Corinthians 12 and 9a. And, uh, and he has said to me, my grace. Woo. <laughs> I feel about 10 of y'all got excited. I couldn't even finish reading it. You got excited because he said, my grace is sufficient for you. For power is perfected in weakness. Every time you break down, God has a power that is beyond human comprehension that will stand you up and prop you up so you can keep on walking. Even when you feel like giving up, he gives you power to stand. Oh, man, I got so much more to give you. I got so much more to give you. Say, preach, pastor. Preach, preach, pastor. I'm doing the best I can. His strength, his strength grants us mounting up power. Oh, mounting up power. Verse, verse 31, I got to run through this. Verse 31 says, it says, they shall mount up <laughs> with wings as eagles. <laughs> God grants us the strength not only to confront <laughs> but to mount up <laughs> above the storms of life. <laughs> ornithological, 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 <laughs> ornithological experts tell us every member of the bird family, tell us everything about every member of the bird family when it sees a storm brewing. 
They fly away from the storm. Every single bird flies away from the storm uh, except one bird. Uh, uh, look at somebody say the eagle. Uh, uh, okay. The eagle, the eagle, he flies directly into the storm. Y'all miss what I just said. Look at somebody tell them sometimes you got to learn how to fly into the storm. Uh, uh, eagle, he flies. Uh, he flies. He flies into the storm. He does, Sister Gentry, because the thermal updrafts of the storm can cause the eagle to fly faster, further, and longer than under normal conditions. Oh, my God. Look at somebody say, fly into the storm. Uh -huh. uh, you don't believe me? Can I tell you? Can I tell you this? Listen, the average speed of the eagle is 55 miles an hour. Look at somebody say, that's pretty fast. Uh -huh. But during a storm, bird watchers have clocked an eagle as fast as 110 miles an hour. Uh, when he flies away from the storm, he can only go 55. But when he jumps in the storm, he can go 110 miles an hour. While the storms of life make some people bitter, can I tell you, they make the child of God better. Can I tell you, you're better because of the storm you went through. You're better. Look at somebody say, I'm better. Days I would be bitter, but I've come by to tell somebody that I'm better. Look at somebody say, I'm better. Better. Oh, my God, I'm better. We, we learn more about the grace of God, more about the goodness of God, and more about the sustaining power of God than we could ever learn under the sunny sky. Listen to this. You might want to write this down. Our faith is forged not in the sunshine of life, but in the storms of life. Oh, oh. God's strength grants us surging power. I got to go. This is getting good to me. I got to go. I feel like, whew, I feel like shouting. Uh, 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 look at somebody say, then shout, pastor. Okay. Uh, uh, let me slow down a little bit. Don't make me get out the gate too fast. Here, Listen, listen. Verse 31 says, they shall run and not get tired. <laughs> they, shall, they shall run and not grow weary yeah while while uh, while soaring power you got to write this down man this is some good stuff while soaring power grants us strength to overcome obstacles surging power grants us strength necessary to seize opportunities Ooh, man i just said something oh i can i say it one more time oh y'all were writing it down i apologize i almost lost it soaring power being able to soar grants us strength to overcome obstacles when i saw i can i can i can overcome obstacles but surging power it grants us the strength necessary to seize the opportunity look at somebody say i'm gonna take advantage of my opportunity i'm gonna do it yeah opportunities present themselves every day and if we're not prepared to meet them they are lost forever William Shakespeare, he penned this. There's a tide in the affairs of men which, if taken at the flood, leads on to fortune by omitted all voyages of life end in the shallows and marshes. Yep, on such a full sea, we are now afloat and we must take the current when it serves or lose our Ventures. In other words, when we exchange our weakness for God's strength, God's power uh, empowers us to seize every single day. That's what you did when you got up this morning. You got up this morning and you said in the words of the songwriter, I got up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. Uh, uh, let me give you this last point and I'm out of here and this point is short I'm telling you it's short here it is yep uh, yeah yeah ju uh, but just as important as soaring power uh, and surging power is finally you must recognize that God's strength grants us staying power okay you missed what I just said I said staying power 
Staying power is the ability <laughs> to maintain an active activity or commitment despite fatigue or difficulty. It involves a blend of perseverance, adaptability, continuous learning, and the resilience to face setbacks head on. When you got staying power, you're not going to let nobody stop you from what God has called you to be. Look at somebody, tell them, I got staying power. Anybody got staying power? Come on, high five a few people around you say, I got staying power. Most of us, most of us have fatigued out by now. That life is not a sprint, but I can, can I tell you, it's a marathon. And the key is simply, you got to keep on going. Uh huh. I think it was the temptations that said, You got to keep on trucking, baby. You can't stop. You got to keep on going. Yeah. After much thought and consideration regarding this text, I had to ask the question I said, Why flying, running, walking in that order? Flying, running, walking in that order. It seems to make more sense to me, it does, to little old me, for Isaiah to have written this verse in the opposite direction. Walking and not fainting. Running and not growing weary. Mounting up, flying on wings as eagles. Doesn't that make more sense? Since that's how we learn to grow. We walk first and then we run. And then we fly. But Isaiah doesn't tell it like that. Isaiah tells it in the opposite direction. Oh, man. <laughs> Isaiah's not giving us, he's not. He's not giving us an analogy on biological growth as much as he is describing the journey we take with God. Woo I just said something. Yes, there will be mountain experiences with God where it will seem as if we are soaring on eagle's wings. There will be times in our life that God allows us to run like the wind. But I discovered that our journey is one that will be marked primarily by walking. Okay, you didn't hear what I just said. Uh-huh. The journey we are now on is a long road of obedience in the same direction. The journey is long and it is it, it and it is on a difficult road or our road is marked by mountains and valleys. It is marked by potholes and pandemics. It's a journey that will be weary and we will be exhausted. But the one who waits on God will have renewed strength. They will walk and not faint. Did you hear what I said? Let me tell you this. You ain't going to fall when you got your hands in the hands of God. You not going to break down when you got your hands in the hands of an awesome and powerful God. Because I came to tell you that God can do anything. He's got the power to change your circumstances. And so I came to tell somebody today who's going in and going through. You have a God that says to you that he's still on your case. And he hasn't given up on you yet. You've got some trouble in your life. Look at somebody say, welcome to the club. Any, anybody know about problems and, uh, and issues uh, and concerns uh, and, uh, and troubles? Uh, but I got a God uh, who can look down from glory, uh, reach down over the balcony of eternity, uh, and pick you up uh, in the middle of your trouble. Look at somebody say, he'll pick you up. Matter of fact, I got five people now who can testify. Had 
had it not been for the Lord on my side, tell them I don't know where I would be. I would have lost my mind. I would have fallen apart. But I got a God who can do anything. Look at somebody, tell them anything. I need about 10 more people. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor that I'm going to triumph over my tension. I'm going to make it over my problems. I'm going to soar over my circumstances. I'm going to make it. Look at somebody, tell them I'm going to make it. And if ain't nobody talking to you, you got to learn how to talk to yourself. You got to touch yourself and say, I'm going to make it. I've been through the storms and the rain, but I made it. Look at somebody, tell them I made it. And I'm still fighting. Do I got some people in here know how to fight? The devil thought he had you, but you're still standing. The devil thought that he pulled your life apart, but you got some super glue and put yourself back together. Look at somebody say, he'll do it for you. Won't he do it? Won't he fight your battles? Won't he make a way out of nowhere? Won't he heal your body? Won't he touch you? and transform your situation. Look at somebody say, he'll do it. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. God knows I'm telling you. The Lord will do it. I've seen him put money in bank accounts. I've seen him touch bodies. I've seen him heal people. I've seen him transform situations. Why? Because that's the kind of God we serve. Look at somebody say, he's God. And he's God all by himself. He's God. And everything that exists, it belongs to God. Even your life belongs to God. Look at somebody say, I belong to God. I'm God's child. Don't you mess with me. If you don't know, tell him you don't know. All the hell I've been through. You don't know the sacrifices I made. You don't know how hard it was to get to church, to get out of your house, to get out the bed. It was a hard task, but you're here now. You're in the house, and you got new power. Yes, you do. Take the power that God has given you and celebrate who God is. Celebrate him for his mighty words. Celebrate him because he's God. Look at somebody say he God all by himself. He woke me up. He put clothes on my back. A roof over my head. And I'm a testimony to what he can do for what he's doing for others. He'll do the same for you. Look at somebody say yes. Yes. Won't he do it? Won't he bless your family? Won't he touch your family? Won't he turn it around? Won't he pay your bills? Say yes. Say yes. He'll do it all by himself. He'll do it with all of his strength and his power. He'll do it. Won't he do it? If he'll do it, look at somebody and say he'll do it every day. He'll do it every situation. 